Hi everyone, before I start this video, make sure that you are a part of my Discord server by joining the link in the description box below. And in this video, we'll be going over A-Level Accounting 2025, Feb, March, Paper 2-2, two, two, question number 2. This is Paper 2, which consists of 4 questions. Two of them will be of 30 marks and two of them will be of 15 marks. And the total time limit for this paper is 1 hour and 45 minutes. Since question number 2 is of 15 marks, ideally you should be spending about 17 and a half minutes in order to solve this question. And in this video as well, we'll be attempting to solve it under 17 and a half minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. Mo runs a trading business and maintains control accounts as part of the double entry system. The following information is available for the month of November 2024. Okay, for the first part, we need to prepare the sales surger control account for November 2024. Dates are not required. Remember that sales surger control account is just the trade receivables account. And trade receivables is an asset. So any increase in the asset will be recorded on the debit side. Any decrease in the asset will be recorded on the credit side. So we just need to categorize which of these items will increase the value of trade receivables and which of these items will decrease the value of trade receivables. We can start with the opening balance. Since we know that it is an asset account, the opening balance will always be on the debit side. So we need to record 18,320 on the debit side. This will be the balance brought down. Then we have contra entry with purchases ledger control account. So contra is basically cancelling out the amount because the supplier will also be the customer. So let's say we have A and B. A purchases goods worth 1000 from B. And then B purchases goods worth 800 from A. So instead of paying the money back and forth, what we decide is to just cancel out the lower amount. So we can cancel out the 800 in this case, so we only have 200 remaining. So instead of paying each other back and forth, now only A will have to pay 200 to B. So the cancelled amount is known as contra, and contra will definitely reduce both the trade payables as well as the trade receivables. So we need to record 139 on the decreasing side, which is the credit side. We can just record it as contra. Then we have our credit sales. Credit sales is the main thing that increases the value of trade receivables. So we need to record this on the increasing side, which is the debit side. So we have 41,735 as part of our credit sales. Then we have the discounts allowed. So whenever we as a business allow discount to our customers, then the customer will have to pay us a lower amount, which means that the trade receivables will now decrease. So we need to record 3,071 on the credit side. Then we have the interest charged on overdue accounts. So the business can also wish to charge additional interest on those customers who delay the payment to us. So this amount will be added to their trade receivables and as a result, the trade receivables will increase. So the interest charged will always be on the debit side. We then have the irrecoverable debt. Remember that irrecoverable debt will always reduce the trade receivables. So we need to record this on the credit side. Irrecoverable debt just means that the customer is now unable to pay us back. So we cannot be expecting that amount. We need to write it off from the trade receivables. Then we have the receipts from credit customers. Once the credit customer pays us, the trade receivables value will decrease. So we need to record this on the credit side. And always remember to record your receipts and payments under the heading of bank. Because all of these will be processed through the bank account of the business. Then we have our sales returns. Sales returns will definitely reduce the value of trade receivables because now the customer will not have to pay back for the goods that they already sent back to us. So this will be 883 on the credit side under the heading of sales returns. Okay, we've recorded everything. Now we just need to figure out the closing balance. We know that we're talking about trade receivables, which is an asset, and the opening balance will be on the debit side. It means that the closing balance will be on the credit side. Okay, for this, we need the total from the debit side. That will be 18,320 plus 41,735 plus 84, which results in value of 60,139. 
Now for our closing balance, it will be 60,139 minus 883 minus 39,202 minus 478 minus 3,071 minus 139, which results in the value of 16,366. And always remember to show your closing balances as the opening balance for the next period on the opposite side. So we have 16,366 as part of the opening balance. All right, that's all for the first part of this question. Let's move towards the next one. We have been given some additional information. And what we need to do is we need to calculate the correct figure for the total of the balances in the sales ledger. And total of the balances in the sales ledger control account. Okay. So we just need to remember one thing in this case. Whenever we prepare the sales ledger, we record the amounts from the individual customer account. Customer account or customer ledger. So if there is any error within the customer account, we have to correct that within the sales ledger. And for the sales ledger control account, we take the balances from the books of prime entry. So if there is any error within the books of prime entry, then we would have to correct it within the control account. And the rule for the control account as well as the sales ledger will be the same. Anything that will increase the trade receivables will be added. Anything that will decrease the trade receivables will be subtracted. And the goal here is to get the correct value for the sales ledger as well as the control account to be the same. Because if it is not the same, then it means that there is some sort of error we are yet to identify. All right, let's take a look at the additional information now. On 31st December 2024, the following information was available. We can see that the value for sales ledger is 22,350, whereas the value for the control account is 23,964. Since we have different values, it means that there is some sort of error, and we will now be correcting those errors. The following errors were discovered, which accounted for the difference. The first one is that the balance of a credit customer's ledger account had been overstated by 189. Remember that this is an error within the customer's account. Error within the customer's account should be corrected within the sales ledger. And in this case, 189 was previously overstated. So now we just need to remove it. So we remove 189. This is for the first error. Customer's account overstated now for the second one the total of the sales returns journal 210 had been posted to the debit side of the control account as 120 this is an error within the control account so we need to correct it there now sales returns is something that will reduce the value of trade receivables so we need to record it on the credit side but instead, what we did was we recorded 120 on the debit side. Now we need to make this look like this. So the first thing we need to do is remove the incorrect amount from the debit side. So if we enter 120 here, it will get cancelled out. So that is the removal process. Now we need to show the correct amount of 210 on the credit side. So that's 210. So in total, we need to record 120 as well as 210 on the credit side, which is 330. And remember, for sales such a control account, credit side is the decreasing side. So anything that will decrease the value of trade receivables will be recorded on the credit side, which is why we now need to subtract this amount of 330 from the control account. Let's do that. So we have 330. This is the second error. Sales returns error. Okay. Now for the third one, the discount column totals in the cash book had not been posted. Remember that cash book is the book of prime entry. So using the values from books of prime entry, we prepare the control account. So we have not yet recorded the discount within the control account. That is where we need to correct this error. Now we have been given the discount column on the debit side as well as the credit side. The discount associated with sales is discount allowed. And remember that discount allowed is part of our expenses. Expenses will always be recorded on the debit side. So in this case, we're only concerned with the debit column. That is 283. This 319 refers to discount received. 
which will be useful whenever we are preparing the purchases ledger control account. But in this case, this value will be irrelevant. So we only need to include discount allowed. And we already know that this is an expense, which will definitely reduce the value of trade receivables. Reductions will be subtracted. So we just need to remove 283. Okay, now for the fourth one, no entries have been made in the books of account to record a dishonor check for 640. Okay, dishonor check just means that we received the check from the customer and then we recorded it under the heading of bank on the credit side. Because after we receive the amount from the credit customer, our trade receivables will decrease. But when you went to the bank to exchange the check for cash, there was some sort of error which prevented us from getting the money. Which means that we actually did not receive this. That is known as dishonor check. Now, how we record dishonor check is that we're just removing the previous receipt. So we need to record dishonor check on the debit side of our control account and this entry had not been made in books of accounts so this was not included within the individual customer account and it was also not included within our books of prime entry so we need to record it in both of these accounts and remember we record dishonor check on the debit side which is the increasing side so we need to add 640 in both of these tables let's do that so we have 640 for the fourth error, which deals with dishonor check. Then we have 640 here as well for the dishonor check. Okay. Now for the last one, an irrecoverable debt of 892 had been recorded correctly in the customer's ledger account. So it is correct here, we do not need to rectify any error. But had been debited to the sales ledger control account as 298. Remember that irrecoverable debt is something that will reduce the value of trade receivables. So we should have recorded this 892 on the credit side. But what we did was we recorded this 298 on the debit side of the control account. Now we need to make it look like this. The first thing is to remove the incorrect amount from the opposite side. So we just record the same amount so that it gets cancelled out. Then we show the correct amount of 892 on the correct side. So in total, we need to record 298 as well as 892 on the credit side. This will result in the value of 1190. Remember that credit side is the decreasing side for trade receivables, so we now need to subtract 1190. Let's write it down. This is the fifth one for irrecoverable debt. Okay, so we've included all of the errors. Now we need to figure out the corrected values. So for the sales ledger, it will be 22,350 minus 189 plus 640, which results in 22,801. Now we want the same value for the control account as well. For control account, the correct value will be 23,964 minus 330 minus 283 plus 640 minus 1190, which again results in 22,801. In this case, the correct sales ledger control account balance and the correct total of the balances in the sales ledger is the same which means that we have corrected the errors in the right places that will be all for the second part now for the third part we need to see two benefits of preparing control accounts okay the very first benefit of preparing control account is that it will check the arithmetical accuracy of the double entry so it checks arithmetical accuracy of the double entry and the second benefit of preparing control account is that it will help to prevent fraud this is because the sales ledger and the sales ledger control account will be prepared by two different member of staffs and like i said before we need the same total from both of the accounts so if there is any difference in the total the fraud can easily be identified 
that's all for this part as well as the entire question if you found this video useful make sure that you like the video and leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future thank you